team. I'm Diana Pejuan from the QA. We have Jolie Croder and Noah Collins. And Nancy's responding. She's hearing fine. <laughs> okay. All right. All right. So we have just a few minutes to go through the um, application process. So if there are any questions, we'll take them at the end. Um, if you want me to review something, you can just uh, send me a message and, and let me know. So I'm going to go ahead. From current slide. Okay, so there are a couple of things that we're going to be going through. We're going to do an overview of Project First Line. Then we're going to be looking at the IPC systems champions, what the expectations are. Um, we're going to talk about the training systems improvement. We're going to go through the core requirements, eligibility, the application process, the selection of awardees, and key dates. So some of you may be familiar with or our tiny little group for Project First Line. Um, this is Jamie Ishomer Azami. We have Jolie Crowder, uh, Noah Collins, and myself who are on here today. Um, just an overview of what Project First Line is for those of us who are not familiar. Um, the CDC, Centers for Disease Control and Prevention, has formed a collaborative with a number of different organizations, healthcare organizations, to create Project First Line, which is geared towards um, providing training for healthcare in infection prevention and control. Um, their goal is to provide foundational and practical knowledge to more than to about more than six million frontline healthcare personnel who are in the workforce currently battling COVID-19. And this diagram just depicts all the areas that they're going to be hitting on. Now, this particular initiative um, in creating the systems champions comes out of Project First Line. And it's a part of the training program that's going to be looking at certification for, for staff. We're going to be uh, hosting trainings for all the UIOs. Um, but for the system champions, there we're going to be selecting a small group of UIOs who will be interested in pilot testing uh, certain trainings that are going to be developed by the CDC and tailored towards UIOs who will have an input in what, what this will look like. And we've developed a program for this. So I'm seeing that my computer is dimmed and it seems like I'm not plugged in. So give me one second. So Project First Line Champions. Um, the goal is to identify and implement sustainable systemic changes in infection prevention and control critical to creating a culture of safety and organizations that are flexible and responsive to the ongoing needs during COVID-19 and beyond. So we're also looking at sustainability. What we're providing in terms of awards is about 40,000 to different UIOs. We're expecting that this will be running from November to July 1st of next year. And we're going to be focusing on infectious disease such as COVID-19, the flu, and the needs of your UIO. So you're going to be required to do an assessment of what your needs are to be able to tell us what it is you need to address in your particular organization. There are core requirements that we have developed that we're asking that each UIO satisfy as a part of, of being a UIO champion. There are going to be training and opportunity for system improvements, a number of different activities geared towards this. Um, the activities will be facilitated by Nikui and co-created by yourselves. And we're hoping that this opportunity will allow you to embrace champions as a teacher learner opportunity. It will rely on your involvement, your experience, it will be problem-centered, and it will be relevant to your immediate needs. Um, what we will be bringing to support you are different improvement methodologies um, geared towards um, quality control, 
such as Six Sigma, Lean, and the Just Culture. You will also have access to CDC subject matter experts. You also have the option to participate in additional train the trainer opportunities offered by CDC. Now the training sessions will be geared towards strengthening the infection control and prevention capacity of the UIA workforce. We're going to be evaluating the training content that CDC will be providing. They're going to be launching this in October of this year. We're also going to be evaluating the delivery methods as well. We're going to be pilot testing content from these training evalu from these training con from these trainings that are going to be provided by CDC. And it should be specific to your needs. So when you select and you pilot test these content, it will be specific to whatever comes out of your assessment once this is conducted initially. IPC champions will support information gathering. Again, this is based on your needs. You will inform the training content and delivery mechanisms, how best training can be delivered based on what your infrastructure is like, what your workforce needs are like. And we're asking that you pilot test materials coming down from CDC. Um, we will have uh, project ECHO activities. We're asking that system champions participate and support these projects. And um, you will coordinate the frontline staff training within your organization. This is a draft provided by the CDC of how they're expecting to roll out their training program. UIOs are expected to have all their frontline workers trained in the basic infection prevention and control 101 training from the CDC. As assistant champions, we're expecting that you would, whomever you choose to represent you within your organiza organization will have had this training done and individuals can select from 101 or 201s. Under the system champions, we're going to be focusing on communities of practice and project ECHO. UIOs, UIO infect IPC systems champion systems improvement. What's going to be required is that you're going to convene or continue a multidisciplinary IPC committee. With COVID-19 hitting, we are aware that a number of UIOs have already formed their IPC infection prevention and control committee or have gathered um, staff to develop programs and policies to address this. If you already have that implemented, you can continue um, to develop that program and that could be a project that you introduce as a system champions. If not, then you have the opportunity to develop your own committee and we will be there to support you. Um, what's also required before launching is that you, con you conduct an assessment of your current IPC practices and identify um, what's missing, what your needs are, and make recommendations. Um, we have provided two tools that you can use to conduct your assessments. Um, that's available on the application website, or you could develop your own um, or pick your own if, you, if there's one that you prefer to assess um, the readiness of your, your site to combat um, infectious diseases. Um, you will plan, implement, and evaluate an infection prevention and control focused project or quality improvement initiative or other initiative in support of a team approach to infection prevention and control based on your current needs. At this moment, it appears to be COVID-19 and we're in the midst of the flu season as well. So this will be a bit of a challenge. Um, whatever you choose could probably look at both or one. Um, there are a number of examples here, novel partnerships or practices for flu vaccinations, improving team communications to, to promote proper PPE usage, alternative staffing model to manage shortages due to quarantine and retention, lab testing procedures, development of staff competency checklists on infection prevention and control. You could review or revamp policies and procedures on infection prevention and control. Use of pocket charts or decision aids to improve adherence to guidelines. You could develop and test a number of toolkits within your community, uh, resource or to promote 
respiratory hygiene. And there's also under this staff advanced certification or training in a relevant area. Um, the core requirements are available on our website. It's also a way available as a PDF in the application website. You could take uh, your, your time to go through what these are, what the time limits are, um, but you will be expected to designate a project director, someone that we will be in contact with who will participate in monthly calls um, with NICUI staff. Um, you will develop a job training plan and pro propose metric to recruit and train your internal staff, implement staff training incorporated into the CDC modules. Um, we talked about convening or continuing a multidisciplinary committee on IPC. Um, there should be an intent to have at least one staff certification um, or develop advanced training plan for in infection prevention and control. Um, we're asking that you provide three five-minute project videos, just showing what your progress is, beginning, what your introduction looks look like, uh, what are your goals for this program. Um, you can take a snapshot during the course of the year, um, mid-course, what, what is the progress like? What does this look like for you, what you've achieved? And at the end, what your final steps are and compare and contrast where you started and where you end and um, provide that video to us. Um, provide, I'm sorry, let me go back one here. Um, share, we're asking that you share related resources. We will ask for articles, to at least two articles on IPC um, that we can share in our, in our new newsletter. We're asking that you facilitate access to um, your staff for evaluating the different processes and to identify additional um, training needs and um, serve as a faculty or lead for one training sessions or, or webinar. Um, during the year. For eligibility, we're asking that UIOs who apply be active members on the NICUI website and are currently funded by IHS under Title V, submit a complete application package. Um, we're asking for UIO basic information, a project narrative. We've attached a work plan, um, a template work plan that you can use or you can develop your own. There is a budget, just give us an idea of what it is you're expecting your, your needs will be in terms of funding for this particular project and that you acknowledge the core requirements. Um, there is a link for submitting the application. You can also pick this up on the NICUI website. Once you go on the website, this is kind of, this is an example of what you'll be seeing. You fill out your UIO information. Um, we are asking for an administrative contact. We're also asking that there be an assigned project director so that we have multiple um, people that we can, con we can contact. And this is where we have an alternate contact that both people um, will be able to share the workload. Your project narrative, what does this look like? We're asking for no more than five pages. We do not want this to be burdensome. Um, you'll state what your statement of need is. And that will, be, that will come out of the assessment that, you, that you've done. Um, on infection prevention and control um, policy and programs um, that you have implemented or lack thereof. So you, you document that in your statement of need. Um, what the impact is. Describe how participating in the IPC Champion Grant program could impact your UIO, include your goals, your objectives for participation. Um, for proposed infection prevention and control, project description, give us a brief concept or overview of your proposed project, or it could be something new or something that you've already started. Um, have a plan for evaluation because we will be asking you to evaluate your, your outcomes and um, propose measures for improving, for improvement of your proposed project in your, not, in your narrative. We're also asking that you look at sustainability, recommendations for activities beyond the current project. How can, you make, how can you extend this particular project to address any kind of future in, impact um, regarding infectious disease within your UIO? Um, and you click on upload and you upload the document. You will do the same thing with your work plan. And this work plan um, will outline how it is you will address the goals within the project that you're selecting. And 
this is just a template you can use your own just add a row if there are additional goals that you want to add and we're asking that you upload this as well your budget um, just the basics wage salaries fringe benefits contractual and consultant costs if you feel that there is more that you need to add you can add a row or a column and um, give us an idea of what you expect to spend the grant on we are also asking for um, an authorized individual to sign the application um, this could be your executive director or your ceo um, within this application it requires that you um, you click on your mouse or if you have touch screen and you actually sign your name here and you print and submit in terms of selecting the awardees um, we're looking at the top five applicants what are we going to be looking at we're going to be looking at the overall impact of the proposed project and project plan how reasonable the project scope is whether it's feasible and, and relevant to project first line we're also looking at your willingness to participate participate and this will come out of your application we're also asking that you commit to the the core set of required activities preference will be given to the selection of at least one uio that represents each of the four primary program types full ambulatory limited ambulatory outreach and referral and treatment centers um, we're hoping that we can select one from each group there are key dates um, the deadline for application is the 30th of december um, we're expecting to notify winners by the 15th of October, and we're hoping to start hit the ground running on November 1st. Um, are there any questions? Um, um, this is Julie. Um, I would, uh, you know, that was a lot of information, um, and maybe while you guys are kind of looking through the links and information that we sent, um, I just want to reiterate for you guys that um, I, I think um, this is one of the first times that Nikui has uh, created a funding opportunity along these lines um, where the target audience um, for the project really is healthcare workers um, and training and um, frontline staff. Uh, we're really interested in helping foster um, uh, uh, workflow improvements, systems improvements in your organizations at a really, um, really critical, chaotic, busy time. And I, I, I just want to say that I hope that you guys know that we recognize that um, and uh, we don't want you to perceive and we don't see this as um, the burden of yet another project laid on top of your organizations um, versus the right training at the right time and support for projects and activities that you might have needed to do or wanted to do to address COVID or flu um, or infection prevention control training for your staff anyway. Um, and then we are hopefully sliding in there to provide you some support and expertise to do things um, um, in the moment that needed to get done. Um, I mean, there are things that we need your help with, helping us figure out what the right training is and the right way to deliver that training for you and your staff and then UIOs in general. Um, which if you look through those core requirements, it's about, you know, I think, you know, half of it is helping us figure out the right training for you and your staff. And the other half is that systems improvement piece based on what you need in your organization. Um, we do hope the selling point, though, is that we bring, we are planning to bring some subject matter experts. Um, we are hiring consultants with experience um, in workflow processes. Uh, we have on staff at NICUI folks with expertise in Lean and Six Sigma and process improvement. And the CDC is also committed, both infectious disease experts as well as folks who are process improvement experts in infectious disease. Um, and so, um, you know, when we talk about co-creating your projects and this work and doing these assessments, um, it is literally a collaborative of these champions um, who will come together and problem solve and work through these things together uh, and co-create these activities um, and, and help move your organizations forward. And so um, that's my sell, I think, hopefully, um, some of the selling points, I think, for the project. Um, 
um, and we would love to um, entertain. We've got, I think there's a million and one great project ideas, big or small. Um, the only other piece that I would say is I, I don't want people to be put off by the, the concept or the term champion. Um, we are looking for organizations, both big and small. You don't have to be the biggest UIO. Um, we're interested in learning lessons from the smallest, um, the biggest with departments within UIOs. Um, and so um, we're open to whomever has the desire to become a leader when it comes to infection prevention control, regardless of size or makeup of your organization. So um, with that, uh, I don't know, Noah, if you have anything to add um, or die on, otherwise, um, we're open to um, questions and other resources that you guys have. There will be a lot of support. It seems intimidating at first, but we do have a lot of support from the CDC. And if there are any organizations who will want to participate in Project ECHO for the first time, there is the opportunity um, for training that we will be providing and quite a lot of support to make the whole process seamless. And like I said, if there are projects that UIOs are currently doing that they would like to use um, in, the, in the championship application, then they're, they're welcome to do that. And we can help support developing their IPC programs and policies further. So um, are there any questions? Oh, no, I don't have anything else to add about this, but I will plug one of our other programs um, is, that we have a fellowship coming, coming up and it's ongoing actually right now. Um, so if you know any public health students that you think would be interested in um, applying for a fellowship with NACUI um, that are interested in infection prevention control or public health uh, in native urban native settings, um, that they can find that also on our website. So. Great, we'll flip it back to you guys. Any questions? So this is Nancy. Um, there, because there are, a, it seems like there's a lot of little um, pieces to this, mm -hmm. um, and that is a little intimidating to me. Mm -hmm. um, <laughs> so um, when we do fill out like the work plan piece, um, are though I, I assume we're going to have to have some. Um, set some dates on those um, being due. Um, will we have to put hard dates on like when we're going to have those things done? No, you can use practical dates and um, oh. things can happen and those dates can change. Um, okay. It is a proposal. You can go back and, and, and make changes based on what's happening within your organization and let us know what that, why the need for the change. Okay. But they're not hard and fast dates that you have to stick to if things are not going the way that you plan. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Things happen. Life is in a turmoil. I, I just, I couldn't come to work yesterday because I was, we were being evacuated with the fires. So, <gasps> oh, <laughs> life's right. kind of in turmoil right now. So, yeah. okay. Thank you. That, Nancy, when you guys do, I mean, the core requirements, there's a, you know, there's a fair amount of detail there. Um, and I think we're pretty flexible on some of, you know, the details and dates on those things. Um, from my perspective, the work plan is most useful when you're thinking about your project, like, you know, what you're going to do for your project and what you're going to do for your training. Um, even though we don't have a lot of insight right now into what the CDC is going to roll out for their training. Um, and so, um, you know, just kind of looking at the big tasks and the core requirement, you don't have to get down into the nitty gritty of the article and put that into your work plan, for instance. Like, you know, I'm most interested, I think, um, when we're looking at the work plan is your concept and how it relates to whatever you think your project, for instance, might be in your organization. Because I think that's the, the soup and nuts, I think, for your um, entities. The other stuff, uh, I think, is gonna be a little bit smaller lift and is gonna require some flexibility on dates because we, for instance, the CDC isn't gonna even start releasing their training module, modules until October at some point. And so that's gonna require flexibility on everybody's part um, to say, we don't even know sort of a timeline on that piece, unfortunately, so. Yeah, Cause I envision, you know, with flu vaccine coming out and then what if, you know, we get some COVID vaccine out at some point, right. Yeah. Um, you know, that could be a project, Nancy. How do you know, oh, yeah, that'd be a project. <laughs> yeah. you know? How do you get people to return for their second shot? That's that in itself is a project. 
<laughs> well, and, you know, I, um, you know, initially we, we had initially thought about leaving the projects open to be created based on, you know, after people applied to be champions, but then we were like, well, how do we pick who the people, like we needed some criteria to pick, right? Mm -hmm. So then we decided that they, you had to submit a project idea, but practically speaking, if you submit a project and then a month from now you're slammed and there is a flu outbreak or things completely shift in some way, I'm, I, we're not wed to um, the fact that if you have to shift whatever your project was going to be to something else, we have flexibility there. I mean, I think there's, what we need is somebody who says, I want to make a commitment to doing something right and well, but if we have to shift based on the needs of your organizations, based on what's going on, um, then, you know, we're, we're pretty open to that. I mean, I feel like every grantor in the universe right now, even at the federal agency, is being pretty flexible in terms of project plans and work plans. Um, you know, knowing how things are flowing. I mean, like, you know, right now the Southern Hemisphere isn't really seeing a lot of flu cases. God willing, we might not as well, um, even though we're still trying to, you know, ramp up to vaccinate right now. So we have to presume that we might not be as lucky as the folks in the Southern Hemisphere. So um, I just, you know, until it happens, I think with COVID and the flu, we don't really know what's going to happen and vaccinations as well. So. All right. Okay, great. Thank you. And I will say, I know you had talked in one of our sessions about just policies and procedures as well, too. So yeah. they're not, that's not quite as sexy as something as fun like, uh, you know, vaccinations, but um, they, that's ripe for content and projects as well, I think. So. Okay. Good. Mm -hmm. There were a couple of uh, frequently asked questions that we had put on here that I hadn't gone through. Um, I don't know if, if it would be helpful, um, but we had asked how much time will this take away from regular staff duties um, or rough estimate of time allocated for individual tasks was around 260 to 300 hours. Um, it seems intimidating, but this is over a period of eight months. Um, an estimation of the hours allocated by task is included in the sample application that we provided. You can develop your own project concept and work plan and how much time commitment is required for your project. Um, other question, can we use a project that we have started since COVID-19 hit? Absolutely, yes. It should be part of a planned expansion of your current project, or it could be a new one. Will you get guidance and support on writing or submitting your reports? Absolutely, yes. We'll provide a template for that. Um, reporting process will be limited to the essential information designed to capture critical lessons learned, share best or promising practices, identify opportunities that both your, your UIO and your QE could work better to improve activities in the future. And you'll be submitting your short videos as a part of your report as well. Um, any more questions, any more to add, Jolene? I don't, um, anybody else on the phone line have any questions? Uh, hi, this is Aaron. I do have one question. Are you able to hear me okay? Yes. Yes. Okay, perfect. Yes. Uh, regarding the, the champions and bouncing off of flexibility, um, are we able to, do we need to identify a specific set of individuals to participate in all of the core required activities, such as like one or two people that have to go through everything? Or can we have a group of like four to five staff members that are identified in case one person can't go through all of the trainings. Like I'm thinking in terms of sure. our providers, like our clinical director would be a champion, our dentist would be a champion, but their schedules you know, are hectic and they might not be able to attend all of the trainings sure. or go through all of the modules. So could we have a, like a mixed approach of like staff designated champions to fulfill those? Yeah, I mean, I, th I think we're open to, um, I think we're open to, you know, whatever, uh, unfortunately, we're still in this space, as I said, of not knowing the rollout of the CDC piece. And when we have, as soon as we have that, you'll know that. And I think that'll make our lives a little bit easier, especially for scheduling for you guys. Um, there is in the core requirements, what we just need someone, and that could be multiple someone, should you so choose to just one person to go through everything 
just to give us feedback. And if you decide that you can't have one single person do that, then we're fine. So long as someone from your organization has looked at, at each of the elements of the 101, 201 and the collaborative piece. If you have to break that up, then that's fine. So long as we have a representative from your organization um, do that. So that is like the, an individual, and that is really to help us evaluate the CDC content and provide feedback on like what we're, how we're wrapping around that piece. And then, um, and then the, what do you do with it? So our hope is that you will evaluate the training and then um, develop a training plan for your organization because you think the training is right on time and something that you would then want to incorporate into a training plan for your organization. Uh, and then you choose at that point who in your organization gets what training that we have developed over the course of the project. So it's, you get kind of a twofer because you've had your staff go through the process of evaluating. And then you can say, you know what, this 101 is pretty awesome. And I think it would make great core content for all of our staff. Or, you know, we only want these particular modules. Um, um, the second part of that is completely individualized to the UIO in terms of how they participate and how they choose to apply that training um, uh, in their organizations, though. Does that, did that answer or over answer your question? No, yeah, that definitely makes sense. And that's what I was thinking. I just wanted to make sure that you didn't want one person specifically yeah. to go through everything. Because I could see yeah. at our organization maybe having three specific designated people to go and make sure that we're going through all the core requirements, but we might awesome. split it up. So yeah, one person does this, one person does that, so that it's not all bogged down on one person solely responsible for it. So yeah, totally makes and, sense. Thank you. And you, I mean, and you may have, I, at right now, we... Um, don't have intent to restrict. So they, we had a lot of interest in the listening sessions from staff um, on a learning collaborative or project echo type learning. Um, and once we figure out what that's going to shape up to be, it, you may have multiple staff who choose to opt into that. You know, like there is the requirement that somebody has to, but that more, you know, more focused engagement, you may have multiple people who want to participate versus having to participate from an evaluation element. If we do a good job and you guys help us do a good job, then um, hopefully we've, um, we've created things that people want to participate in as well. So thank you. Aaron, and to clarify for Project First Link, we're looking at the UIOs as champions and not so much the individuals. So it's your entire organization that would be the champion. So whomever you, however you allocate your resources to completing the core requirements, mm -hmm. um, as Jolie said, it's really up to you. But we just want to be able to able to reach out to someone and have someone participate in the monthly meetings that will be required. Yeah, definitely. Okay, that makes sense. Thank you very much. Any more questions? All right, if there are no more questions, um, there we have provided an email address um, to IPC at org. If you think of anything um, while you're reviewing the application or looking at what the packet looks like, please feel free to reach out, send us an email, we'll respond. Um, if you wanna speak with us on the phone, we'll provide a phone number um, and we can go through the process together. Um, thank you for your time. Thanks everybody, have a great day.